play the game of spades, first, set up the game. To do this, first decide on partners for the game. Each team will sit opposite their partner. So these two players would be one team, and these two players would be the other team. After deciding on teams, get a standard deck of playing cards. Remove any jokers or extra cards from the deck. Next, one player will be named the dealer. That player will shuffle the cards and deal cards to players, one at a time, face down, until the entire deck is gone. Each player will start the game with 13 cards. Each player should look at their hand cards, but keep them hidden from all other players in the game. Each player should also arrange their cards by suit, and within each suit, they should arrange their cards by rank. The ace is the highest ranked card of each suit, and the two is the lowest ranked card. Finally, players should get a piece of paper and a writing utensil to keep score. They should write both of their team names on the paper. Under both teams, write the headings, bids, tricks, score, and bags. After setting up the game, players are ready to begin playing. The game of spades is a four-player, trick-taking game. Each round of spades will start with each player looking at their 13 hand cards and deciding what number to bid. To understand how to bid, a player must first understand the rank of each of the cards in the game. The cards in spades are ranked as follows. The heart, diamond, and club suits are ranked with the two as the lowest and the ace as the highest ranked card within each of those suits. So the jack of hearts is higher ranked than the eight of hearts. These rankings only apply within these suits. So the ace of diamonds is actually not ranked higher than the ten of clubs because cards outside of their own suit cannot be compared to each other. The spade suit is ranked in the same way as all other suits, with the two as the lowest ranked spade and the ace as the highest ranked. So the king of spades is higher ranked than the three of spades. The other thing to know about the spade suit is that it is the most powerful suit in the game. Any spade card in the game is ranked higher than any card in any other suit. So even though the ace of diamonds is the highest ranked card in the diamond suit, the two of spades is higher ranked than the ace of diamonds. And even though these two cards are both jacks, the jack of spades is higher ranked than the jack of hearts. To start the bidding process, the player to the left of the dealer will make the first bid. That player will bid any number from 0 to 13 tricks that they believe they can take using the cards in their hand. Tricks will be explained further later in the play section, but basically a trick is a set of four cards, one card played by each player. The highest ranked card in the trick wins that trick. They will announce their number out loud for everyone to hear. After they make their bid, the next player to their left will make their bid. Once again, they will bid any number of tricks they believe they can win with their hand cards, from 0 to 13 tricks. They are not required to make a bid of any number based on the previous player's bid, so their number could be the same as the previous bid, higher or lower. After they make their bid, the player to their left will make their bid of a number of tricks from 0 to 13. This player may still make any bid they choose. However, they should keep in mind the value of the bid their partner made. They must add their bid total to their partner's bid total to establish their team total. So if this player bid 5, the blue team would have a team total bid of 8 tricks for that round. Players should make sure their team bid is a feasible number. They will receive a penalty for failing to win enough tricks to win their bid, and they will also receive a slight consequence for winning more tricks than they bid. After that player makes their bid, the dealer will be the last player to make their bid. Once again, they should keep in mind what their partner bid and what their team total will be. After all players have made their bids, each team will write their bid on the paper under the bid section for their team. As mentioned, each player will bid between 0 and 13 tricks. If a player bids 0 tricks, this is known as bidding nil. If a player successfully avoids taking a trick after bidding nil, they will gain a bonus of 100 points for their team. However, if a player bids nil 
and fails to achieve zero tricks, by taking a trick, that player will lose 100 points for their team. So bidding nil, or zero tricks, should be used with caution. A player bidding nil will most likely have a hand full of low-ranked cards. For example, this player could try to bid nil, because even though they have some spades in their hand, they are low-ranked spades. There are two scenarios players should know of that will give them guaranteed tricks. If you are holding the ace of spades in your hand, you are guaranteed to win this trick, because no card in the game can beat it. So a player holding this card should bid at least one trick for this card. And a player holding the ace of spades should never bid nil. If a player is holding a run of the highest valued spade cards, they will be guaranteed to win one trick for each of those cards. So if a player is holding the ace, the king, the queen, the jack, and the ten of spades, they would be guaranteed to win at least five tricks, one for each of these cards. After each player has made their bid, and each team has written their total bid on the score sheet, players will move into the next phase of the game, the play phase. To start the play phase, the player to the left of the dealer will choose one of their cards from their hand and place it face up in the middle of the playing area. The card they played is the start of the new trick. They may play any card from their hand to start the trick, except a spade card. Spade cards may not be played until the spade suit has been broken in. This will be explained further later. After that player plays a card from their hand, the next player must play one card from their hand. To play a card into a trick, a player must follow a few rules. The first card played will define the suit of that trick. So the first card played into this trick was a heart. The suit for this trick will be hearts. After the suit has been established, all other players must play a card from their hand that is in that suit, if they are able to. They may choose any one of their heart cards to play, but they must play a heart. If a player does not have a card in the suit for that trick, they may play any card from their hand. So this trick was started with the ace of clubs. The suit for this trick is now clubs. The next player plays their four of clubs. The next player, however, does not have a club in their hand, so they can play any card into the trick, including a spade. This player decides to play their seven of spades. The last player has a club in their hand, so they also play a club into the trick. If a player does not have a card in the indicated suit for that trick, and the player plays a spade into the trick, that player has officially broken in the spades. Now any player in the game may start a trick with a spade card. If a spade is the first card of the trick, the spade suit will become the suit for that trick. And all players would have to play a spade card from their hand, if they were holding one. If they were not holding a spade card in their hand, they could play any card from their hand. A player not holding a spade card may want to get rid of one of their low-ranked cards in another suit. After all players have played their one card into the trick, in a clockwise direction, the player who played the highest ranked card in the trick will win it. If any player played a spade into a trick, all other cards in the trick will be ignored, and only the spades will be ranked. In this trick, the player who played the ace of spades would win this trick. In this trick, the two of spades would win this trick. If a trick does not have any spades in it, the trick will be ranked based on the suit for that trick. The suit will be defined by the first card played into that trick. Any cards outside of the trick suit will be ignored. So this player played this first card into this trick. So only cards in the heart suit would be ranked. All other cards would be ignored. So the player who played the ace of hearts would win this trick. After a player wins a trick, they will place the trick cards face down in their player area. As they collect more tricks throughout the game, they will either stack their tricks in different directions like this, or they can put their tricks in separate piles so they can be counted later. The player who won the last trick will start the next trick by playing one card from their hand face up in the middle of the playing area. The suit of the card they played will define the suit for that trick. The play phase will continue to play out in this way, with the player who won the last trick starting the next trick 
until all players have run out of hand cards. The play phase ends after all of the tricks in the game have been won. After the play phase ends, players will move into the third phase, the scoring phase. During the scoring phase, all players will count up their tricks and add their trick total to their partner's trick total. So for this hand, the blue team scored eight tricks. They would write their total in the score section under the tricks heading. The red team scored a total of five tricks. They would also write their total in the tricks section of the score sheet. If the tricks were all scored correctly, the total of both teams' tricks should be 13. Each team will then either score points or lose points based on how far off they were from their bid. If a team wins exactly the amount of tricks they bid in phase one, they will score 10 times the amount of points as their team bid. So the blue team bid that they would win eight tricks and they won exactly eight tricks as a team. This team would score their bid amount times 10 for a total of 80 points. They would also not have any bags, so they would leave the bag section blank. If a team wins more tricks than they said they would win, these extra tricks are known as bags. Each bag a team scores will score them one point per bag. Teams do, however, have to be careful about gaining too many bags. Each time they reach 10 bags, they will lose 100 points for their team. So in this game, the red team bid that they would win four tricks, but they actually won five tricks, one more than they thought they would. This team would score their bid amount times 10 for a total of 40 points. They also gained one extra trick. This extra trick is known as a bag. The team will indicate this with a tick mark in the bag section. So the red team scored 40 points for reaching their bid goal and one point for their bag for a total of 41 points. Let's look at one more example of this. Let's say the red team had made a bid of three tricks. They actually ended up winning nine tricks this hand. They did achieve their goal, so they would score 10 times their bid for a total of 30 points. They won six tricks more than they thought they would, so they would have six bags from this hand. The red team would also score six points, one for each of their bags from that hand. They scored 30 points for reaching their goal and six points for their six bags, for a total of 36 points. Each time a team acquires 10 bags, they will lose 100 points from their score. They can also go into a negative score if they do not have enough points. For example, let's say on the next hand, the red team, once again, exceeds their bid. They thought they would win five tricks, but they actually won 10 tricks. They went five over their bid and got five bags. They scored 50 points for the bid they achieved and five points for each bag for a total of 55 points. However, they also reached the 10 bag limit, so they would be penalized by losing 100 points from their score. So this round, the red team actually scored negative 45 points. After these two hands, the red team would currently have a score of negative nine points. The red team already has one bag that counts towards their next 10 bag limit. If a team reaches the 10 bag limit several times during the game, they will continue to lose 100 points each time they do so. It should be noted that there are several variations of the game of spades. Some variations do not use bags and simply give a team one extra point per extra trick they win. If a team fails to make their bid, they will lose 10 times their bid in points, even if this puts their score into a negative value. For example, let's say the blue team thought they could win nine tricks, but they only won eight. They failed their bid. So the blue team would lose 90 points for this round, moving their score to negative 20. It should be noted that in some versions of the game, failed bids score players zero points. If a player bid nil, and they didn't win any tricks for that hand, they will score their team 100 points. The team will also score points for their partner's tricks and bags. Their partner bid that they would take four tricks, but they actually took six tricks. They would score 10 times four for a total of 40 points. They also scored two more tricks than they guessed they would, which would give them an additional two points, one for each extra trick. 
and they would mark off two bags on their score sheet. This team would end the round with 142 points. If a partner bid nil and succeeded, but their partner failed their bid, they would still score 100 points for the successful nil bid, but their partner would lose them points for failing their bid. So if this partner bid that they would take seven tricks, but they only took six, they would lose their team 70 points. The scores would be added together, and this team would have a net score of 30 points. If a player bid zero or nil, and they fail to achieve that by taking one or more tricks during that hand, they will lose their team 100 points. Any tricks they won would also count as bags, because their bid was zero and any tricks they took would be more than their goal. They would also still score one point for that bag. Their partner would also score their tricks as usual, but they would not be able to count any extra tricks the player who bid nil won. For example, their partner had bid four tricks, but had only won three, so they would lose ten times their bid in points. Usually teams can add their tricks together to help each other out, but this is not the case when a player bids nil. If nil is bid, the partner is on their own for that round. This team lost a total of 139 points. As another example, let's say this player bid nil, but they took two tricks they would lose their team 100 points, but score two points for their bags. They would also mark those under their bags section. Their partner succeeded in their bid. They bid that they would win six tricks, but they actually won seven. They would score 10 times their successful bid for a total of 60 points. They would also score one point for the extra trick they won and take another bag for the team. All in all, this team would lose 37 points for this round. After all players have scored their points for the round, they will start the next round of the game. The player to the left of the previous dealer will become the dealer for the next hand. They will shuffle the deck and deal 13 new cards to each player. The player to the left of the new dealer will start the next round, which will play out in exactly the same way as the previous round. The game of spades ends when one team in the game reaches or exceeds 500 points. The team who achieves this will win the game. If players would like to play a shorter game, they can play to 200 points.